Hello everyone, it's Meg and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some books that you may not have heard of or some books that I think are personally underrated on booktube. As you can see, we are in this setup again. I feel like this is going to be my new quarantine setup because apparently doing the setup on my bed is too much effort and we are in the new makeup zone again and you may wonder I will have some videos going up before and after this video where I do have makeup, that's because I pre-filmed them back in like March. So I still have pre-filmed videos, but like I've not worn makeup in like a month and I'm not going to start here. So we're doing a spontaneous video, I just thought about doing this video the other day and I was just like, I've got a bit of time, I will sit down and film it. So that is what we are doing and I technically did a video basically like this at some point last year and it was something titled like books you should read and it was basically talking about some books that I feel like are underrated on booktube or I don't really hear people talk about and this is basically like a part two and I saw I know Hayley Bookland did a video like this fairly recently where she titled it like books you probably never heard of and I feel like that is kind of going to be the case with this as well I feel like a lot of the books that I'm going to talk about to you guys today are books that I haven't really seen anybody on booktube talk about or books that you might not have heard of you might have heard me talk about them on my channel because these books I all love so very dearly but yeah I just thought I'd do it, it seems fun, I'm in the mood to do it so that's what we're gonna do today I have around seven maybe eight books I think to show you guys today so without further ado let's get into the video. So the first book that I have on this list is The Lido by Libby Page and I have read this fairly recently. I read The 24 Hour Cafe by Libby Page as well which I do also definitely recommend in this video it's just that my mum's currently reading it so I don't have it on my bookshelves but this is an adult contemporary novel and this is Libby's debut, The Tooth Our Cafe is her second novel and this book specifically follows two characters called Rosemary and Kate and it is about them coming together to save their local Lido in Brixton and this is just such an absolutely wonderful book. I only came across Libby because my friend um, from Little Bright M um, was talking about uh, The Tooth Our Hour Cafe in a recent in a anticipated releases video at the start of the year and that's how I came across Libby and then I didn't know where to pick this up but I got it in a book fair really cheap I read it I fell in love with it I think I might love it even more than 24 hour cafe but it's just such a wonderful story and even though I tend to watch people on booktube who talk about YA I know a lot of the people I watch are at similar age to me so they're kind of delving into adult literature a bit more and this is one that I love I feel it's also because she's British I feel like I tend to hear a lot about American adult contemporary novels rather than British adult contemporary but this is absolutely wonderful I Libby's books tend to center around the themes of community and friendship female friendship specifically and she generally has around two main perspectives but then the same with both of her books they have different odd chapters where they are about like customers in the cafe or people that live in Brixton or go to the swimming pool what it means to them and kind of a peek into their lives as well and her novels are just so lovely I love Libby's writing that's one of my favorite things about her novels it's so fresh and interesting and I really think more people should read her books or or at least on booktube because I haven't really Em's probably the only person I've seen talk about Libby on booktube so far so I really think people need to read these books so if you are kind of delving into adult fiction a bit more I would definitely recommend Libby's books they are both so wonderful they have lovely characters lovely writing a really heartfelt stories that kind of make you feel emotions you get really invested in the characters I love it so much so if you are like I said looking to, for a new adult contemporary novel I definitely recommend Libby's work the next book is another adult fiction novel and I feel like most people have heard of this book but I don't feel like a lot of people have actually read it and that is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaffer and Annie Barrows and also this is another one of my favourites I read it last year, fell in love with it and it's historical fiction and I have a couple of historical fiction on here which I don't generally read but this is a wonderful novel and it follows our main character Julia who is 
a, a writer and a journalist and this takes place post World War II and one day Juliet receives a letter from a man who is from Guernsey and they basically strike up a friendship and they start writing back and forth and then all the other characters who live on Guernsey start to send letters to Juliet and she gets to learn about what their life was like during the Nazi occupation and this is just such a lovely book. It is heartbreaking at times because when you listen to the stories that these people have been through whilst the Germans were occupying Guernsey, it's very heartbreaking. But at the same time, it's so lovely that you get to love all these characters. There are quite a few, but you get to know all of them pretty well. And I love Juliet. She's such an amazing main character. I love her friends as well. And this is also written in letter form. And I just adore this book so, so much. I really think more people, I, I feel like quite a lot of people have read it because obviously it, can, it has been adapted into a film. But I've never really seen people talk about it personally on booktube that I have watched. So if you have heard of this book, I definitely recommend going and picking it up, even if you're not a historical fiction fan like myself. Like, all the historical fiction books that I have on here I recommend because, like I said, I'm not a historical fiction person, especially when it comes to like the world wars, but I fell in love with this book. It's like a story about stories and that's what I really love about this. So again, another book that if you are looking to kind of delve into more adult fiction or you are kind of looking for like a book about stories that's just going to make you so happy but feel all the emotions at the same time, I definitely recommend picking this up. Speaking of historical fiction, these two books I have talked about quite a lot on my channel but I have not heard anybody apart from one person talk about these books and that is A Sky Painted Gold and Under a Dancing Star by Laura Wood. You, like I said, you guys will have heard me talk about these in videos. I absolutely fell in love with them. I heard about them from Lucy the Reader and she fell in love with them so I picked them up on a whim and like I said, I absolutely fell in love with these novels. They're both historical fiction. The A Sky Painted Gold is set in the 1920s and follows our main character Lou and this is set in Cornwall and she meets these siblings who live in this fancy house on an island off the coast of Penlyn and it is basically about her summer with these siblings in this glitzy, glamoury, Great Gatsby-esque kind of world and then under A Dancing Star it follows our main character B, who goes to live with her uncle in the Italian countryside for the summer and there are lots of artists who come and live in this villa, stay there like over the summer or over throughout the year and B loves science as well and these are both romance novels but I feel like there is a lot more substance to them than that and um, this is also set in the 1930s by the way just before World War II breaks out so there's a little bit of political intrigue in this but not a lot but they're just so wonderful the writing is my favourite part of these novels I love Laura's writing it's so immersive you feel like you are there with the characters and the characters are wonderful as well I think they're very well rounded and they are fleshed out and I love how our main characters kind of want to make their own way in the world. Like I said, they're romances, but by the end of the novel you see them kind of flourishing and kind of learning more about themselves, who they are, what they want to do with their lives, and wanting to establish a career that may not have been appropriate at the time when the book was set. And I just love these so much. They are really quick and easy reads. You could read them in a couple of sittings or one sitting. I can't do that because I'm not a fast reader, but I love these books. I've talked about them so much on my channel, but I've only heard one of the person talk about them and M has read this book in a recent video that we did and she loved it, so we're gonna buddy read this together, so that's very exciting, but yes. I cannot recommend these books enough. You guys should know how much I love them by now, but I feel like so many people should talk should be talking about them and reading them all because they are absolutely wonderful and I cannot wait to see what Laura writes next. Next up is another book I've been talking about quite a lot and that is Diary of a Confused Feminist by Kate Weston. Again, another novel that I've never heard anybody talk about on booktube. To be fair, this only came out like beginning of February but I absolutely fell in love with this novel. I got it as an ARC in a subscription box. I read the ARC, fell in love. This is my finished copy which I haven't read yet. But this basically follows our main character named Kat who is 15 years old and is starting her last year of high school so she is in year 11 and this is basically kind of a coming of age story about Kat kind of discovering feminism and she decides she wants to be a feminist so she's 
learning about feminism, but it covers so much more than that. This book is absolutely hilarious because Kate used to be a stand up comedian, so the humour in here is just absolute perfection and I really enjoy that, especially it's kind of more of it's a British humour because obviously it's, she is a British author. So I feel like that really comes through and I really love that. I've never laughed whilst reading a book so much. Like I've giggled and maybe smiled and stuff but I've never full on laughed. So if you want something that's going to make you laugh you should definitely read this. But apart from it being extremely funny, I feel like this book is very relatable like especially for teenage girls. It covers topics such as feminism, obviously, hence the title of the book. It covers bullying, it covers social media and kind of like the pluses but the negatives of social media. It covers body image, it covers periods, it covers mental health. I really, really love the mental health representation in this for anxiety and also the representation for therapy as well. And you get to see Kat just grow as a person and kind of learn more about herself because she feels like she isn't grown up compared to her friends and I just love that novel, this about that novel and I also, it kind of reminds me of uh, Eliza and the Monsters, kind of like how the book goes, like the theme and like the vibe of the book if you see what I mean, especially the last 100 pages so I should, I honestly think more people should be talking about this book, it is absolutely fantastic, it's so funny and I can't wait to see what Kate comes up with next because if it is as hilarious as this novel is, I feel like I am hooked. I cannot wait to see what she comes up with next. This is just an absolute brilliant book. I think should be in schools and even though I am in my early 20s, I still manage to relate to this book and really enjoy it despite kind of the age gap because this is obviously kind of sort of the lower end of YA but I absolutely adored this book and I think more people should read it and it will guarantee to put a smile on your face. Next up we have A Thousand Perfect Notes by C.G. Drews and this is another book I read fairly recently, read it for the Animal Crossing Readathon and this is another book that really took me by a very pleasant surprise. I've seen a couple of people talk about this book in their videos, I don't think I've ever heard anybody's opinions on it, I think I've seen it on like TBR videos and book hauls and all that sort of thing but I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about their opinions on it and this follows our main character called Beck and his mother used to be a professional pianist but unfortunately Beck's mum has a stroke which means that she is unable to play because of her handshake so she basically forces Beck to play the piano and he kind of channel what she couldn't accomplish through him. This book I was drawn to for the fact that it involves music and music is something that's a very big part of my family. My parents are musicians, my sister studies musical theatre, basically nearly everybody in my family does or has played an instrument. This is obviously about being a pianist and I really appreciate the musical aspect of it and kind of the references to different con like composers and different pieces of music and all that sort of thing. And I really enjoyed this, it has very beautiful writing so if you are looking for something with really lovely writing I think you will enjoy this. And I really enjoyed the characters, I feel like it was just generally a very well structured story. <laughs> well structured story. I feel like the characters were very well fleshed out, they were very imperfect and there's a little bit of a romance in here which I did end up enjoying, it's kind of not the main focus of the book. The main focus is very much Beck and not wanting to follow his mother's rules. He doesn't even call him his mother, he calls her the maestro. And this does definitely have a strong content warning for domestic abuse so just be aware of that before going into this book. But this was just generally a very good book. It had you pulling at your heartstrings as you are really rooting for Beck. You know that he deserves a better life than what he already has as he is basically being made to play the piano as kind of a form of torture and he doesn't want that. But I just, again, I just think it's a very well-rounded book. I don't really, I have nothing to complain about this. I think it's all very rounded. I like the characters. I love the music aspect of it and the references and just everything about it. So if you have heard of this book like me, I definitely recommend giving it a go, especially because the writing is so lovely and it's just one of those really nice books that's a relatively quick read even though there are some hard hitting moments at times. Next up we have All About Mia by Lisa Williamson and I think I included one of Lisa's other books in my last video that's kind of like this. I think that which was The Art of Being Normal, I think I included that, I'm not sure, it was a very long time ago when I filmed it, 
but this is Laura's second book and it follows Mia who is the middle sister and she her older sister is destined for a Cambridge I think a big fancy university and her younger sister is destined to swim in the Olympics and Mia's in the middle she doesn't have a thing she doesn't know what to do with her life and she feels like she does not get as much appreciation or love from her parents as her other siblings do so she's kind of a bit of a party animal she's a bit reckless and she gets into a lot of trouble and this is basically a coming of age story about Mia learning to believe in herself and realise that maybe her perfect family, her perfect siblings aren't so perfect after all and Mia is a very very imperfect character but you do grow to love her very quickly she makes some very stupid decisions and you kind of cringe about why she's doing it she tries to get attention off other boys and men when it is really very inappropriate because she's trying to find love in other people that because she's not getting it from her family even though the people that she is kind of trying to get that love from aren't the sort of people that she should be around and interacting with or trying to get that sort of connection with in the first place but this is just such a really wonderful novel it's very quick I love Laura's Lisa's writing it's very easy to read it's a very quick read I read this very very quickly and I just think Lisa has very good well-rounded books again they're just very easy they're very well rounded the characters are very fleshed out I don't have any complaints about her novels so far and I just think they're great in general I've barely seen anybody talk about Lisa whilst I have been on booktube and I definitely think more people should read her work because I think her books are really really lovely and I cannot wait to read more of her work in the future next up we have another adult contemporary romance novel and that is True Hearts at the Lonely Hearts Bookshop by Annie Darling and I picked this up on a whim in a charity shop and I ended up falling in love with this book. This basically follows our main character called Verity Love who works in a bookshop with her friends and she lives above the bookshop with her very needy cat and then one day she's in a restaurant and there is some mix up with this guy and they end up having to fake date and this is just a really cute, fun, fluffy contemporary romance that involves fake dating and it's just so lovely it will if you want like a really cute fluffy read this is definitely something that you should pick up it's just absolutely wonderful I love the characters there's kind of a Jane Austen-esque vibe because Verity loves Jane Austen so there are kind of little bits of that because she keeps quoting Jane Austen's novels and it's just absolutely wonderful I really love Johnny as well who is our other main character and it's just so much fun. It's also a very funny book as well. I love the humour in it and it's a perfect book for a bookish nerd especially because obviously it's set in a bookshop and Verity loves to read and it's just absolutely wonderful. It's just one of those really lovely quick easy fluffy contemporaries like I said before and I've never heard anybody talk about her books before. I never even heard of her until I randomly picked this book up but I'm so glad I did and like I said if you are kind of delving into the adult contemporary or just adult fiction world in general this is another good book that you could pick up and just in general if you want something very light-hearted especially around the time that we are in now I definitely recommend this it will again a guarantee to put a smile on your face and the last book that I have on this list is Dangerous Alliance by Jenna Key Cohen I feel like a couple of people have talked about this book be in like hauls and stuff like that on TBR videos but I got this book in a book box subscription box for December and I read it back in March I think it was March anyway and I didn't know what to expect going into this book this is a historical fiction novel it is an ostentatious romance and it basically follows our main character Vicky who is 17 or 18 years old I think I think she's around 17 and she lives with her mo mother and her father on her family estate and one day her sister appears back at the estate as her husband has been mistreating her so they travel to London to try and find Vicky a husband as she is now the only hope of, a of saving their family's estate and I, like I said I didn't know what to expect going into this novel 
and this is definitely like a mystery novel I would say. I didn't really know what was going to happen, like I've never read a mystery book before I don't think, it's not the generally my thing but these things keep happening to Vicky and they don't know what's going on so Vicky has to kind of try and solve it at the same time and I ended up really enjoying this book like I said a lot more action-packed than I thought it was going to be and I did end up enjoying that and kind of the mystery aspect. I kind of thought there would be more elements of kind of the Jane Austen novels in here. Vicky is a big fan of Jane Austen she had has read all the novels from that had come out from when this book is set which is in the 1900s which is like around the time that Jane Austen was alive so I thought there'd be kind of some bits of Jane Austen's stories in this novel but it's just kind of more about how Vicky tries to channel the characters from Jane Austen's novels into solving this mystery and kind of how she's going to approach life and all that sort of thing but I really end up enjoying this book I don't haven't heard anybody's opinions really on this but I'm really glad that I got to read it and it's another ostentatious novel and you guys should know how I'm all about the ostentatious books and all that sort of thing. So if you are into kind of like historical fiction or and kind of like obviously ostentatious Jane Austen all that sort of thing I think you will really enjoy this book and I also really love the history behind this as there's an author's note in the back here which if you read this definitely go and read it and it's kind of about the history of being a woman in the 1900s about divorce especially as obviously it, a woman is more of a property of a man during that time so it's kind of harder for them to like submit a divorce and kind of about marriage and all that sort of thing. I found that the, my most enjoyable thing about this book kind of learning about the history of like marriage and divorce and all that sort of thing during the time that this book was set. So. I really enjoyed this, it took me by surprise, I'm so glad that I finally got to read it and I also really enjoyed the audiobook as well so another one if you are kind of an ostentatious or historical fiction kind of person I think you will really enjoy this. So that is it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you find a book in here that you maybe have never heard of before and you fancy picking up or one that you have possibly heard of but haven't read yet and maybe you decide to end up reading it and enjoying it let me know it in the comments if you have read any of these books or if there's any of these books to you that sounds really interesting I would love to know as always and I hope you find something on it that might make you smile or maybe delve into some of these authors other works in the future as I feel like just in my personal experience and the booktubers that I watch I haven't really seen any of them talk about these books personally so yeah I just thought I'd share them with you they're books that I love very dearly and I think should definitely deserve a little bit more love in this community if you like this video then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more bookish videos from me then make sure you hit that subscribe button and little bell icon so you'll be noted every time I post a new video. As always, I will leave the links to my social media, I love the links to my Goodreads in the description down below for you guys. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye!